this is my research that's what i have told you that you have to bring the bring the novel contribution that if i do that can i actually introduce it in iot based system can it be possible that other people will get benefit out of it that type of things you have to bring it but don't go and argue that this is iot okay because that will be very difficult to win because iot is very very broad huh? and it will be quite difficult to convince that this is only for iot applications you have seen so many protocols are there it's very difficult for us to do something because those big protocols they are all backed by big big companies so it's very difficult for us to to into to do something and say this is iot you understand so from iot perspective the definition is very broad and it will be very difficult to say that we are doing only for iot it can be just a part of the iot some little bit of you know contribution but definition is very broad okay so this is one of the project which my student who started work on uh, iot enable platform so what he has done this just shows you so he tried to try to this this is the final thing this is the simple temperature sensor he connected to the platform analyzed it and uploaded it to the internet okay so that's the platform but you need that so you have the intel board wireless part and you have to connect so that's what i always tell that intel galileo when they actually design that platform they should have added that wireless part it would have been much simpler but they unfortunately did not do i i really don't know why but they did not do so you have to connect that and then you connect the sensor so we we just we just wanted to see whether we could upload the data in the internet without much hassle okay so in order to do that we had to use we had to subscribe a internet server and that's also another thing i will talk about it so it all whole system it takes 5 volt power supply so now this is not the challenge for iot researcher okay this is the challenge if somebody starts without background you understand because my student he he started almost from zero okay he did not have any computer science background he is a hardcore engineer and he started iot is something which actually computer science background get advantage so when my student will come my ex student will come tomorrow you will see he is a computer science guy and when he joined my group before that we were doing lots of things no output okay in terms of putting the data in the internet wireless communication all these things but he is a computer science guy when he joined in my group things changed of course i am not telling all computer science guys are like that because i have met lot of computer science guy they hate hardware isn't it usually but he is a different guy so he he picked up the sensor part hardware part easily but because of his expertise in computer science things become you know i mean i always tell a family will be very happy when husband and wife mix together without a border that happen when a computer science guy accepts the sensors and hardware makes a very happy family so that's what happened so anyway he will he will share some of his experience tomorrow but usually before that i always like to get a engineer for my group not a computer science guy but now i am so open last 3 4 years i always get interest when a computer science guy likes to come to my group because i think that things will be much better okay so it's a, it's a it's a necessity iot actually force that type of necessity that you cannot restrict yourself only to this because it's such a broad thing unless you have got you no know, little bit of experience of all the areas is very difficult to visualize the complete scenario 
So he put it up. What are the things he need to do? So as I said, that wireless module was not there in the, in the Intel board, which is a requirement. So that need to be done. Need to have some knowledge on the Linux systems, which sometimes the engineers do not care, is not it? But you need that. So operating systems, when your embedded processor development use the Linux system because that is useful to connect it to internet, you need that. Embedded C or C++ because your integrated development environment allow you to develop your program in that environment. Basic knowledge on server client communication systems. If somebody comes from computer science background, that is a huge advantage, is not it? Engineers, I am not talking about the individual interest, I am talking about in general, engineers do not have much, in, much idea about that. So, that is quite useful. Communication protocol, especially the HTTP internet protocol, if you know TCP IP protocol, if you know, otherwise you need to learn little bit, that is an advantage. Arduino sketches using Arduino IDE, that is also required and knowledge of PHP, MySQL and Java to develop applications in the, in the internet server domain and then some knowledge of the cloud server. So, these are the fundamentals for someone working on IoT. Now, if you know only a bit, little bit of that, it is really be difficult that you may not be able to do a complete system. Okay? You can do only a little part but it will be really, really bottleneck. So, useful. Okay. So, this actually tells you that how he actually put his data. So, I do not know when, whether anybody has come up of ThinkSpeak. This is kind of a server, cloud server, which allows you to upload the data by using their developed program. So, in the beginning you actually can get, I am not sure whether you can get it in India, but at least in New Zealand, this I think US based system. Uh, in the beginning you can use it free okay, for few months, but then you have to subscribe. So, right now we pay 12.5 dollar per month and you, you get almost like 5 gigabytes of storage, uh, but 12.5 gigabyte, 5 dollar per month is little bit expensive. Uh, because we want to do everything free, is not it? So, sometimes it is a problem, but you do not need to take for long, you can take for 6 months or during your development period, 1 year or so. So, that is one of the server, cloud server. So, what he actually, so it, it, it just, it just puts the data every 10 minutes, every 10 seconds for here. So, this is just not so much important, but at least he has developed all the program, then he connect to Wi-Fi, then he tries to upload the data and ThinkSpeak actually follows the HTTP protocol. So, it uploads the data in the internet using ThinkSpeak. Now, you may not use the ThinkSpeak, you can develop your own, but at the end you, if you put your data to the internet, you must have some kind of rights to upload your data in the internet, is not it? Otherwise, you cannot do that. I mean, you may always think that you develop a web server or uh, uh, what is that called? I mean, some kind of you no know, web based system, but again, if you have that, your university has to allow it. Our university do not allow to go for their server, you understand? So, sometimes this is a problem. So, you can, you can upload your things in the website, but once you do, once you try to play like that, they do not allow you to do that. Because you can upload the data in the website, but you have to go through the technicians, you have to go through the, the um, authorized person. So, we had that issue. So, it is better that you, you actually subscribe some, you know, some website which allow you to upload the data. But anyway, different ways it can be implemented. So, I do not know whether you will read all these things, but as you can see some of the things quite useful. ThinkSpeak set up to prepare the board to execute the program. 
and that is very very important especially if someone does not have much idea of those type of development work I think you need some extra help. So, this was quite useful. So, it tries to connect and you just do not need to worry for that because it, it goes on if it fails it tries to connect again. Okay, so, this is of course, the hardware point of view you connect your temperature sensor and of course, this is coming to the microprocessor and then you have to develop a website and things speak allow you to do that if you subscribe and it goes to the API mode application programming interface key challenge number given in the sketch of course, if does not match this will fail definitely. HTTP post protocol to send the data to the specific channel things speak server because they actually allow you to do that they receive the data and stores in the appropriate channel and you can actually use that same server to up to display your data. Okay. What I want to convey here that if you use that type of server that can help you to develop your program. You may not have full flexibility, but in the beginning you do not need that flexibility what you need is to is to go forward. Okay. Once you go forward then you can think of where you can actually improve or what changes you can make to make the things better. Okay. So, this is the this is the some of the lines of the program. We use Intel Galileo to upload the temperature to thingspeak.com, but we even though we use Ar uh, Intel Galileo, but we use the IDE for the Arduino. Okay. So, these are the some of the lines. Okay. So, if, if you see some of the things actually you have to follow directly from what you got in the Arduino library program and they use the they use the HTTP protocol and data is uploaded in the server. Okay. So, some of the program which you have and then in the thingspeak.com you will get per specific channel where you upload your data and this is the. So, this is the data directly coming from the ADC and that is the temperature actual temperature. So, sometimes you may have some resolution problem. So, you may not have difference. So, it is like 0 0.5 degree difference, but you may not have, but it depends on your ADC resolution. So, sometimes you can see one bit of data can be reflected like that. But anyway, it is not that so much important what you are doing that part accuracy and other part can be taken care by the sensor and the signal conditioning circuit. So, what is important is that you have got some data whether you are able to upload into the internet and you can see it some from some remote location. Okay, so, so, this is the part where is your hardware comes software and this is the things which you need to subscribe and this is your sensor. So, anything can be the sensor what you want to measure. Okay, so, now connecting to the cloud is actually you have to go through yeah. So, can we use Arduino mode and temperature sensors to get the data from temperature sensor and then use things speak to upload on cloud? Yeah, but Arduino board the one of the problem of the Arduino board is that they have wireless connectivity part was extra things you have to add. So, that was one of the problem Intel Galileo board designed for that but only problem is they did not give, but they have given the provision of the connections, but Arduino board they do not. So, you have to add extra. For example, yeah, I mean I, I got your point. So, what happened you have to give, get the Arduino board, you have to get separate the wireless board and connect it. What, what Intel Galileo has done they did not provide that wireless board, but they gave the space where you can connect it. You understand for Arduino you have a two system Arduino board wireless. For Intel Galileo, you have two system, but it's it's inside. That's the only difference. Can I use Arduino board, laptop, and then things? 
yeah i mean if you want to bring the laptop then it's become more complex you understand because you then what is happening your laptop is connected to internet and you are doing it a different way in actual situation uh, you may may win if you go for gateway based system where you have got many sensor node your laptop is connecting as a gate used as a gateway then it's okay you can justify but if you go for like a um, M, uh, iot enabled platform then having the laptop will make the system costly i mean you can always argue that now cheap laptops are available but still you cannot compare with a platform but in in some some application like home monitoring application you need to have the computer okay you cannot avoid so then computer is used as the gateway yeah somebody ask something for me actually arduino software tools can be used by other platform also that's what we did for in, uh, intel galileo we are sensing temperature uh, for example sensing uh, temperature by arduino so we can just uh, create a method they not create uh, method assume that it is sensing some temperature virtually not in arduino so actually we did not use arduino okay the one which we i showed you is we use intel galileo but we use the arduino environment for developing the program so sensor what we use that is connected to intel galileo so what i'm telling that your your platform can be anything now we try to compare few platforms because as a part of the phd student we want to finally tell that this is the platform available which is the best at the moment because you cannot say this is best for ever isn't it things will change so we want to compare few platform so one of the platform is intel galileo one of the platform is arduino one one of the platform is intel edison board another platform is that uh, we have seen some other uh, system so we we want to see few platforms then we have their comparative advantage disadvantage and we want to say this is the one at the moment based on the available platform this is the best way to go but our answer may not be correct after few months somebody else will come up with something better you understand so if you think of that you have some data coming out of the sensor how do you put it into internet you need to have some platform isn't it otherwise what will happen you can upload the data but this data will be some kind of offline data then you will struggle yourself to define that your work is basically iot you understand unless you tell those data are coming out from real system which i am not considering but it is coming out from real system do you get me i am see don't don't think of that i am trying to discourage you i am trying to say you are your work is not iot no i don't have that type of intention what i am trying to say that if you define your work under the umbrella of iot if you do not encompass everything it will be difficult for you to justify if i am the examiner of your thesis i will reject it because i will say that you have seen the tail of the elephant and you are defining elephant that that is a thin rod you understand my point so just be careful of that vision unless you have that vision you will not be able to you know visualize everything so this is just little bit of the cloud because we do not work too much on cloud we just subscribe and we try to put the data in the cloud but if you see now cloud is a big business cloud is a big business lot of big big manufacturer you don't know who are they but they are providing you space and they charge you money okay so this is something and once you put the data using the cloud the data coming from your system once that you have to go through them it doesn't matter who is that but you have to go through them one of them 
Okay. So, there are lots of ways the things are implemented and you can see the connectivity portfolio they do not tell you that you go only through this they give you access of any one of this and you if you work on wireless sensor network you will actually use one of them whether you use Wi-Fi or use Zigbee or you use Bluetooth but you will get any one of them. So, they actually encompass everything and then you follow their protocol you will be able to upload the data. So, communication topology in IoT is a is such a mess I will say such a mess that is very difficult to follow a certain thing okay? at the moment it is not, but that does not prevent you to do research on IoT does not prevent you because it actually allow you to do anything. Okay? So, whether you go for the sensor domain you have many protocols available and if you go for IoT domain still many protocols available here too. So, you you take I mean from research point of view you may consider a particular things, but what I want to convey is that do not tell that is IoT you can always say that is a part of IoT IoT is the big picture you get it. So, that is the that is the thing you have to be you have to keep in mind. So, the gateways is very very useful at the moment because you can deal with different complex protocol at the moment. This part is a huge amount of research to be done and are on undergoing, but the cloud gets a huge amount of data. So, many people they are going for different apps, many people are going for data analytics. So, that the, the this research is called big data which is itself is a huge area of research at the end you come up with some kind of decision making thing. Okay? I mean whether, whether the data will be used by a business and they will go for making new product that at the end of the day is the call of the business people, but that is what going to happen. So, huge amount of data that will be analyzed and that will be giving you some kind of decision which will be useful for making their business better or something else. So, the communication protocol as I said that there are different layers. So, you, you say that the communication protocol what we have TCP IP protocol what we have there are some areas where things will be little bit change other part can be remaining as it is. So, whether you like to work on the application layer or only transport layer, network layer, link layer that depends on how you want to contribute. Think of any contribution and just go for that. So, normal the network layer we know the seven layers they are not all touched by IoT or the wireless sensor network even like if you see H02 protocol they only use three or four layers to make for their needs they do not touch all the layers. So, you have different characteristics of different layers and based on that different protocols have come up. So, and the range of course, we are talking about the huge range, but they can be all connected to IoT. So, some of the and this is not that important you all know that that uh, how do you define the pan lan and man and one. So, the connectivity wise you will have 2.4 gigahertz which is actually giving you access anywhere in the world and that is what is more popular even within 2.4 gigahertz there are many frequency band it is used to avoid the interference. Okay. So, we so as I said that uh, 6 low pan was quite popular few years back, but actually it do not see too many development happening in the 6 low pan area, but ultimately 802 is going to stay because they have different advantages and people are actually quite biased they use ultimately 802 for different applications. So, which will not change very quickly different uh, protocol has got different weaknesses and strength. 
right. So, that is one and for the IoT protocol at the moment there is no as I said there is no standard protocol. So, many people use HTTP protocol some of them use web socket, some of them use co-op, some of them MQTT other than that there are few more. These four may be maximum percentage of different applications at the moment, but there are three four more which are still used by many people. Sometimes you will be kind of handicapped if you use a particular cloud server you understand. So, if you subscribe a particular cloud server they will tell you what protocol you have to use you understand the problem. So, sometimes you may like to do something there, but you do not have the option ok. So, that sometimes can happen. So, for us as I said for us that is not a issue because we we think that we are weak, we are weak in the internet domain. So, we cannot contribute very th very strongly in that domain, we can contribute something in the sensor domain. So, we really do not use that internet part as research element, you understand my point. But if you think that your strong point is the internet and other part you have to find out the problem, so that you can get some ideas to contribute there ok. Unfortunately for me I think that we can contribute in the sensor area, so that will be our research element, but if you want to do IOT you need to connect that sensor to internet we do not want to you know play around there. We can compare, we can say which is good, which is bad, but in terms of research we may not be able to do much unless we have got very good knowledge, you understand. So, that is the that is the problem we have for our group. So, these are the different communication protocol you have and you have to use one of them. Of course, as I said that you may come up with some problems of a particular protocol. You may actually think that can you add something from there, something from there make it better. You understand what I mean? Because everyone has got some strength, has got some weaknesses. So, can you actually take out the weakness, strength of that, strength of that mixing together? That can be good research, but problem is whether you will be allowed to do ok. I mean then you have to go for your own protocol that is one of the bottleneck, but you need to think of that way. So, you can see the comparison wise they are not too much different except this transport layer otherwise very similar whatever you see. One of the things what is going to happen is that how they will cope up with 5G is not it. So, one the 5G is going to come anyway another few years time. So, 4G is already existing you can see in, in, in the television how many times you see the advertisement of Airtel ok. So, 5G is going to come sooner how they will cope up with 5G and the cloud server is really really important you have to use some kind of clouds for putting your data into internet. So, they will be dictating you sometimes that is another problem they will be dictating you, you may not have much flexibility or opportunity to do anything there. But what I personally feel those things if you come up with some kind of weaknesses and you can you get the idea that you can actually in contribute something there it will be quite good to communicate with them and you know get some options or get, get some permissions where 
you could actually contribute and test your system because those things are still under development because they are not fully developed, they are not fully foolproof. Everyone has got some strength, everyone has got some weaknesses. So, can be a good way to go. So, the cloud server I really do not know at the moment because we just use as kind of storage. Okay? We upload some data, we can access it, we can access it anywhere, but cloud is bigger than that. Cloud is bigger than that, it is not just a temporary storage. Okay? So, they will have lots of other things. So, with time I think this area will be a really, really fascinating area, but at the moment still not very clear. So, as I was telling that in terms of the security you have to see where actually you can have the security even in the smart devices, you can have the security in the in this particular layer or you can have in the application layer. So, there will be okay. so, so, lots of things are happening. Okay. So, even the in the cloud actually like uh, wireless sensor network that can be extended further. So, if you think of the wireless sensor network, you give more power to the coordinator and at the moment the telephone companies they have base station which is basically fixed, okay? which is basically fixed, but the subscriber are increasing. So, the base station is not able to deal with the amount of data and then you fail, uh, face the problem or call drop, okay, drop call. I do not know in India whether it is a problem, but even in New Zealand with little population we actually discuss about it. So, there is the idea that if you think of your wireless sensor network, your coordinator they are located in different place you can add you can extend them as a mobile coordinator. Okay? So, it, it goes on moving with its network. Then can you actually use that mobile coordinator as a mobile base station? You understand? So, that is way another, another type of idea coming up. Then what happened your base station which is design beginning thinking of only so many customers you do not need to extend it because extending hardware is not easy, but allocated extra load can be allocated to that mobile base station they can actually handle. So, that type of thinking is actually coming. Okay? One of my colleague uh, got some funding there is a body in New Zealand called internet New Zealand they gave him money 150,000 dollar to develop that. So, Basically, what I am going to say is that that type of research that wireless sensor network can be connected to IoT in a much closer way. It is not just putting the data in IoT, they can be a part of the system more closely and can contribute. So, as you say, it is a quite complex field. So, you have to think of you do not actually need to think of that doing research in every area, what is important is to understand the whole complex system and then think of contribution in the specific area, but the whole complex system will be there. So, there are lots of service provider in New Zealand, I am not sure how many will be there, but at least I can see Amazon is giving lot of advertisement in New Zealand for selling their things, okay? in India for selling their things, but they are also cloud service provider okay is not just they sell things amazon is a very very rich so these are the few companies in in new zealand for providing cloud service so what do they do so they provide of course service and they also tell you what type of hardware you need to use and gives lot of help in the software they also help you are providing some uh, development of some protocols in the service for the cloud accessing the clouds, 
they help you for upgrading your firmware time to time otherwise it, you face the difficulty and mobile applications for data viewing processing remote device access mobile application development that's of course you have to negotiate with them as a student you can always get some advantage okay as i said that 6 months free and then you can pay price and programming language java php mysql c sharp python and so many other things so it's quite a flexibility you can have so when you decide before that you can go through all the available server and you can see advantage disadvantage of course at the end the cost can decide what you should have security very important as many of you are working on that but as i said where you actually introduce that depends on your strength and also the from system level what will be the contribution so you can go for the application level you can go in the tcp udp level you can go in the 802 level but you have to see how you actually look your research in that area okay so whether you can provide security in all the level but security is going to stay because it's a hot topic security is going to stay okay i mean even though i say security you cannot make any full proof system that's different story but it is going to stay and security will be a hot topic when iot goes to general public okay general public always they will be concerned about the security okay they will always talk about the privacy and other things it will take time some time but that is going to stay it will not be solved very easily so it is going to be there it will be a research topic for at least for few years near future it will be there but for you you have to see which layer you like to contribute okay so this will be useful for tomorrow so tomorrow my ex student will come and show you some practical demo how you can develop the software and so on but today i think if i give you this introduction then it will be easier for you to get the complete picture because tomorrow we may not have sufficient time for him to cover everything so this one basically if you think of zigbee based system so zigbee the zigbee node which you can use to develop sensor node to develop coordinator you do not have any microcontroller you directly interface sensor and it transmit the data data is received at the coordinator which is connected to your computer i am not telling you other part other part you will be given no help tomorrow but at this stage how do you actually interface the sensor to zigbee how do you configure the zigbee how zigbee communicates to the coordinator that part i will go through okay so javed can you go to the next page yeah so so what we have developed this was given as a tutorial for last few years and we have some standard zigbee based system we developed that so that the participants they actually do hands on okay so that was the purpose but unfortunately here you will not be able to do hands on because of so many students uh, so many participants so here we 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 just give the information that if you want to make your own system then how much you need to spend so you have to have zigbee and uh, explorer your cable, usb cable and you have to give some sensor you need batteries battery holder sensor we use is only temperature and humidity and uh, xctu program you don't need to buy because if you use zigbee dg key that gives you the software so software is free which you can download in your in your system okay next so zigbee just a zigbee of course as many of you know zigbee few years back many companies came together and developed the zigbee so it's the proprietary one 
Anybody, any part of the world, if they want to do research using Zigbee, absolutely there is no problem. But you have to be given an undertaking that Zigbee is not used other than research purpose or other than commercial purpose. So effectively, uh, it's just want to stop you to develop something for harming human being or harming society. So that's what some kind of undertaking you have to give once you buy the Zigbee. I don't know whether that's true for all countries, but at least in New Zealand, because we don't have Zigbee manufacturer in New Zealand, Zigbee manufacturer mainly in US, so things come from US, we have to go through the vendor and we have to give that undertaking. If you use Zigbee, you have to, in communication topology, you have to follow some kind of topology. So it can be a star, it can be a tree, and it can be a mess. Now, they have little bit of difference, like star, if you think of, star is one to one communication, okay? It's device to device communication or machine to machine communication. Now, some situation you face is the range. So, Zigbee, for example, Zigbee gives you, Zigbee Pro gives you range in air around 1.6 kilometer theoretical range. Theoretical range I am talking about because you do not get more than 700 to 800 meters ideally, okay. But you can use a separate antenna, you can put more power, then you can get range like 1.2, 1.3 kilometer. But without antenna, you do not get more than 700, 800 meter in air. Suppose you have got an environment where you want to monitor a 5 kilometer range of radius, a circular area of 5 kilometer range, 5 kilometer radius, then one to one will not help. So at the extreme end, your data need to come to the central point and that is what we need hopping. So always most popular one is the mess. Okay? You can still go to the tree, but in tree problem is if one of your, so what happened, you tell them, so for example, this one is the end node, this is the coordinator, here end node, but this one is the router. So in tree, if your router is damaged, you gone, you cannot do anything. But in mesh configuration, if one router damage, other one can be used as a router you may actually do not know how it happens, Zigbee protocol has done that way. So you do not need to worry that if one of my router is stop working, can I actually still get the data. There will be some data loss at that moment, but then other router will come into picture. So that is why mesh protocol is most commonly used in Zigbee. Okay? So this is the system we developed with some sensor, actually we have some control here also, just to check the control part, so at Zigbee. And this is the laptop which we are showing, this is the explorer. In order to configure any Zigbee, before you use it here, you have to use the explorer using the XCTU software, you have to configure it. Okay. So, you need to get the best version of the XCTU software. XCTU software is available in this website, it is in the DG key. They are the owner of the software and you can use that. So, you upload that software, download the software in your computer and then you can use that XCTU software. So, once you have that in your computer and you use that computer uh, XCTU program, start XCTU. Then you will get, you can see that other in the other page. So you will get that window. You have to go to modem configuration tab. Okay? Now tomorrow when Nagender go through, he will actually go through each and every step. But here just we will go through. So you will go to the modem configuration tab. Once you get that, you will come to this modem. Now this modem, you have to decide which one. So XBE. XB24-B, you have to see in the Zigbee other side what is the part number because Zigbee develops lots of different Zigbees with time they change many things, okay? but the basic things may be remaining the same. 
So you have to see the part number and you have to follow that particular modem. Okay? So you get the part number in the back side of the Zigbee and you have to do that. And then you have to go for the coordinator API mode version 1147. I am not sure whether the version changes but at least 1147 is there for quite some time. So you get this particular window, okay? get this particular window. So first thing what you have to do, you have to register the PAN ID. So what is the personal area network ID? So you give a unique ID, four digit number. Okay? So even though it is a 64 bit address, but you give only four digit number, other part is remaining constant. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is just a specific example, need not to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Once you give the PAN ID, you have to give the baud rate. Now these are selectable, so there are many baud rates available, so you select which one is good for you. Now in our system, we do not want too fast, so we chose 9600. Whatever you choose for your node and the coordinator, it must be the same because they need to communicate at the same speed. Okay? So that is one of the requirement. So you can select any value, but the value should be same at the coordinator and the node. Next important thing is the sampling time. So that is done in IR, IO. You need to give some decimal value. Uh, actually in hex, but it is basically some decimal value. Whatever value you give, that comes as millisecond. That comes at millisecond. Minimum you give something like 20 millisecond. Because you give time, so if you give more values, that means you are increasing the time. So frequency reduce. So the highest frequency you get is around 50 hertz. In some application, that may not be enough. Okay? Sometimes some people want to get lots of data, but 50 hertz is not too fast, but it is designed for that. So once you give that, then you have to go for call always update firmware. So he will have somewhere here, always update firmware. You can see you have to tick that and then you have to go for write. Once you do the write, that means basically those things are written on the Zigbee, okay? Zigbee node. So after that, you actually get back what is the value of the coordinator address. So low and the high of the coordinator value that you have to get that because if you want to use the Zigbee in a control mode, so you get the data, usually you get the data from the node, but you want to send some data to a particular node, then that is useful. Okay? So once you do that, you close the program. So these are the few things you need to do. Most important one is the, is the PAN ID because the PAN ID of the coordinator must be the same to the PAN ID of the node. Okay? Okay, so once you do that, you close down, take out the Zigbee and put your other Zigbee to the explorer and follow the same step. Okay? Follow the same step. So here your register you need to set because once you configure some nodes with a coordinator, the coordinator and node they need to communicate with this. That ID is very important because you are actually making them a family. So this address is important. Now here we, we configure the node as a device where the sensors are connected. Okay? So you have to decide in the hardware where your sensors are connected. Now we have connected I think uh, two analog, uh, how many, D1, yeah we have connected two, two analog input that is coming in the D0 and D0 and D1. So in the hardware that should be connected in the D0 and D1 as analog input and also we connected D2 to D4 at digital inputs. Okay? So we have two analog inputs and three digital inputs. So that should be instructed 
to the Digby node. You understand? You have you have hardware where you have connected to the pin analog signal, digital signals, but you must tell the Zigbee that these are my analog inputs and digital inputs, otherwise Zigbee will not know even though you have got hardware. So, do not think that I have connected in a hardware that means end of the story is not. You have to tell the Zigbee while you are configuring. And once you do that, then you have to set the baud rate, baud rate must be the same what you have given in the coordinator. And then also you have to give the sampling time that also must be the same. Once you do that your firmware that you need to update. So, you have to update the firmware and go to the right. Right means basically you are writing on the Zigbee is not it. And you can read before you write you can read the status what is actually it is sometimes if you see that everything is the same you do not need to write it again because you might have done that you know and then you do not know which one sometimes you need to do that because once you do and if you do not actually write down and you put it you know you get lost. So, you have to read it to see what is exactly. So, once you do that then you can actually again check the options of the SL and SH because that value should be the same with your coordinator. Once you do everything just close down the program ok. Next. This one this is a separate thing tomorrow Nagender will tell you ok how you design the graphical user interface ok. So, graphical user interface sometimes is very important because as I said other people they would like to see the data there ok. And if you do not do that then you are not popular uh, because the data comes on the screen uh, it is not good. So, here as you see we have connected the Zigbee with a some control some LEDs we want to see ok. Uh, just here if you see once you communicated to a particular Zigbee you have to give the address here ok. You have to give the address here and you want to connect to your COM port. So, you have to select the COM port that COM port this, this will be you know done in the software and you can select the baud rate even here that part of course, uh, Nagender will tell you how do you get that you know how do you design that ok. So, next bit yeah. So, when everything done and you start working you start getting on the XCTU software you start getting lots of data ok, but that data no meaning to you unless you get the right information. So, what it does it just send you lots of data what you see in the screen XCTU screen 7E0010 all the digital code ok. So, you once you get all the data it may be 48 bytes or 52 bytes you do not know which one is your actual data but you get like that. So, that is why if you use Zigbee unless you really develop a software it does not help. So, software is very very important because you have to extract the right information from the data which is coming as a stream clear. So, this is very very important. So, as you see when it starts the data so basically here you get so many things one is start of API command you have to have some response length remote ATI command then frame ID 64 bit address another 16 bit address and then some AT command then status then checksum. So, these are the things which is called header they will be transmitted whether you have got 1 byte of data or 2 byte of data or 3 byte of data it does not really matter they will be sent always ok. So, that is the security we are talking about is not security is like communications takes place ok. So, how do you know how do you know when you get your data in the coordinator how do you know it is coming from the node which is in your network you understand. So, here even is the same protocol the, the telephone company use you have a mobile phone you may be subscribing BSNL or you may be Tata Docomo I do not know what are the other companies here, but do not you think that 
they will have to have different protocols yeah they have to they may have they may use the same but the code will be different otherwise your mobile phone which is belonging to tata docomo bsnl somebody can get this you know communication that doesn't happen isn't it similar thing exactly the similar thing is not that big it's a small scale but exactly the similar thing it, it is there so in your computer when you get those data coming through the zigbee you have to extract the data so what you do you need to know from the start byte where is my start byte is it the start byte from my network then you see at what byte i have the information now in your case if you remember that my earlier protocol what we developed i can say that my third byte is my data or fourth byte and third byte is my data here unless you know the protocol and you study that actually 41st byte is the starting data and 41st 42nd gives you the one analog signal one 43rd 44th gives you analog signal two that information you must have and you have to write the program to extract those particular bytes okay it's not very hard but it's the way you have to get so once you do that so here you see this is your digital value and this is some ascii code you know they are the same meaning the same but you will have that and those commands you need to get and you need to extract the information that's all okay i think i think here we'll we'll this actually talk about how do you send the data to to a device when sending the data you have to write some particular bytes and that bytes will be used by your coordinator to send the byte to the command to the node and the node will depending on that byte node will execute something anyway tomorrow he will give you some idea at least those who did not work on that type of system will get some idea okay so thank you so let's go and we can have lunch